people already know about my story and uh, displacement was part of my life uh, in Pakistan and then also moving to the UK. Uh, but I have met girls around the world who have been displaced, who have lost their homes and uh, often people talk about refugees and immigrants in numbers and in figures and we hear about refugees but we, near, uh, we never hear from refugees. Right. And for me it was so important that we hear from these girls, hear their stories and get inspired and uh, you know, they show resilience and bravery and courage, and, uh, and I think they have overcome all these difficulties, so there's a lot for us to learn from them. It's interesting because when you, when you see images from, uh, you know, uh, refugee settlements or places where people have been displaced by war, it's often the images that connect with people. As you say, the numbers don't seem to shake anyone, mm -hmm. but for instance, from Syria, we saw the image of that little boy, you know. Um, do you think that we could do a better job of putting a face to these people and to these groups? Do you think there's something we could do to improve how we see other human beings who are struggling? I think definitely there are a number of ways in which we can actually know more about the issue. Uh, I think firstly is, you know, finding out and meeting the refugees and immigrants in our own community. And uh, one of the stories I have shared is of this amazing young woman who is reaching out to uh, immigrants in her community, helping them, you know, going to the grocery shop or uh, getting their education or applying to university. So it's actually going out there and doing it yourself, but also, um, you know, listening to the, the girls' stories that are out there. Reading this book is one right. is one opportunity uh, to hear from these girls, and uh, uh, and I think this is a way for us to to hear from them. Um, and uh, and I think what is inspiring is that people are interested in these stories and, and they want to know more and uh, have already seen that so yeah when you when you look at the story of refugees around the world one thing that seems consistent is being a refugee is already hard enough being a woman or a girl who's a refugee mm -hmm. exponentially increases how difficult that journey is it's so much more precarious it's 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 a really dangerous position to be in as a young girl what do you think some of the biggest misconceptions are about girls who are refugees or refugees in general around the world? I think uh, the first thing is that becoming a refugee is never their first choice. This is the last choice and this is often the, the only choice that they have right. is to leave their homes for their safety, for their better future because they have lost many things in their lives. And uh, you know one of the stories that I have mentioned is of Annalisa from Guatemala who lost her parents, she became orphan at the age of 15 and had to cross the, the US border and go through so many difficulties and you know the fear and, 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 and this, 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 I, this sense that you go through where you feel like you're not safe and like somebody could kidnap you or somebody could put you in jail, like all that you have to go through is, is not an easy thing when you're only 15 years old who have lost their parents. And so it just reminds us of the, of the courage that these people have but also the fact that you know we need to look at it from a more uh, a human eye, from a human angle, and understand what would we be in a situation, um, how would we react in a, such a situation, what would we personally be uh, when, when we also face the same kind of conflicts right. or wars or uh, other things that force us to leave our homes.